Am I the asshole for telling my wife to return it all? My pregnant wife, 26 female, and I, 35 male, are really struggling at the moment as I lost my job and my wife had to quit her job as she's suffering from hypermesis gravidarium. We've used up our savings and currently are living off of our credit cards, but I've got a job lined starting in March. My wife is very close to her sister, 31 female, and a few days ago, she confided in her that we are struggling. Her sister has never liked me, but has always been polite to me. She has always kept me at arm length despite my attempts at trying to foster a warmer relationship. A few days ago, my sister-in-law came to visit while I was away and she was appalled at the state of the house and the lack of baby supplies, as the baby room was bare bones and we hadn't bought many baby things. When I arrived back home, she had given me a lecture on taking better care of her sister and scolded me for not getting ready for the baby. The next day, she came back and she had bought things for the house and the baby. My wife also told her that we had to sell her car to pay off some of the bills and rent. Again, my sister-in-law law had to show off that she bought her a car and to top it off on Sunday she sent her 50k and then texted her this in quotes this is your money and your babies do not use it on that man if you need more tell me and I'll send more and remember wherever I am there's a home for you I feel like her sister is trying to make me look like a failure and I expressed that to my wife my wife and I argued and in a fit of anger my wife said that I only feel like a failure because I've been failing Ooh. she she has apologized since, but I still stand by telling her to return everything as I feel like accepting her sister's so-called generosity is a way to manipulate my wife into thinking I'm a bad husband. I feel like initially, like, obviously the husband's the one writing in, like, am I the asshole for telling her to, like, return it all? I think your specific problem that you're writing in about, yeah, you're in an unimaginably tough position. You have a baby on the way. You both lost your jobs. So, Yeah. He's embarrassed. But like the sister is also doing you a massive, huge favor. I just think it's like, it's interesting. Like a lot of the comments OP is throwing in, like she's never liked me. This 50K is for you and your baby. Don't spend it on that man. Like, is there context missing? Like what has OP done that like, would give the Maybe. sister this this feeling. You do wonder where that comment's coming from, though. It's because weird. that that changes the whole dynamic of everything. And that, in the wrong light, would make you want to say, return it all. Yeah, because she's not respecting us. She's Correct. not respecting but me also, as your partner. But also in that position, yeah, you take a punch in the face, but you also take, like, what could be a saving grace. I think obviously he's trying to paint the sister-in-law in a bad light, but he didn't like necessarily need to include a lot of what he included too, right? He, like well, this is very intentioned also from him. Like I'm I'm really sitting over here analyzing. Well, but that's fine, but even still then why why even question and put your foot forward and say no, we're going to return it all. I'm looking at the comments yeah and in really big letters one of the comments says op has been unemployed for two years oh his pride didn't mind living off of his wife who had to leave her job five months ago it's taken that long for him to finally line up a job for himself it's no wonder his sister-in-law doesn't like him and why she told his wife the money isn't for him i guess like looking at it like this too like the husband should be grateful that Absolutely. your baby has someone that amazing in yeah. their life. Right. But instead, he called it showing off. I think that's his ego. He's well, just, it's, yeah, which is bruised. absolutely crazy. And so uh, the overall vote here is you're the asshole. Okay. And in this situation, like you guys were saying, he doesn't have the luxury to do that. And it's not just like a, it's not a petty thing. It's, it's real life. It's, it's concerns. It's, it's not having a job. It's wanting to bring a kid into this world and have them be set up comfortably. So yeah, it, it and, and the good thing is, is that he did do an edit and he said, Okay, I get it. I'm the asshole. I'll, apo I'll apologize to my wife and to my sister-in-law. It hurt, but thank you for the brutal feedback. Wow. Okay. So growth. There is growth there. There's growth. Yeah. Well, there, wow. yeah, there's hope. Yeah. There's hope here. Yeah. When my girlfriend and I get into a fight, she pees on the floor. <sighs> So throwaway account for obvious reasons. But a couple of months ago, I, male 24, met this really incredible girl, female 22, and we hit it off. We shared a lot of common interests and spent pretty much every waking moment together. She had this really weird obsession with being a cat girl, but I thought it was kind of hot, so I didn't really care too much. 
Even though it was pretty early into our relationship, we decided to move in together. And it was pretty good for the first couple of weeks. But then things started getting weird. I'm not going to beat around the bush. And I need you to understand that I'm being 100% serious. She started pissing on the carpet when she's frustrated with me. She says it's a part of her kinship or something. But when we have an argument, she'll just squat and piss somewhere in the apartment. I don't know what to do. I'm losing my mind and my entire apartment smells like urine. I do genuinely enjoy her company, but this is getting out of hand. I I don't know what to do. (laughs) I need help, please. What is going on? Are the straight people okay? What is going on? (laughs) (laughs) Not only do you have to argue about it, not only do you have to worry about losing the argument, but your loss (laughs) now results into a urinated carpet. No. Oh my God. No. Can you imagine getting so mad at someone that you piss the floor? Not only can I not control my emotions, but my bowels as well. <laughs> oh, damn it. <laughs> Pull my dick <laughs> out. <and start> <laughs> would, would you pee back? If I was him and I got to the point <laughs> where I couldn't take it anymore, <laughs> I can't beat him. Just join him. Am I wrong for being glad that my future sister-in-law had a miscarriage before my wedding? Oh my god. I know this sounds very bad, but hear me out. I, 24 male, and my fiancé, 22 female, are planning to get married this summer. Now, one of her bridesmaids is her sister, 27 female, who planned to attend our wedding while 7 months pregnant. I obviously didn't like that as I figured that her pregnancy would steal attention from us especially as she's one of the bridesmaids. And she's honestly such an attention seeker that I wouldn't put it past her to have gotten pregnant purposefully before our wedding in order to upstage us. But there was no way I couldn't have excluded her from the wedding as she's my fiancé's sister. So I just dropped it. One, I am shocked this is coming from a man, okay? Usually men don't care about weddings. They're just like, do it to make my wife happy. Two, it's your sister. The fact that you think people get pregnant to upstage people at weddings, no one cares. If I'm at a wedding and I see someone pregnant, That does not take away at all from the couple. You got bigger problems here, man. Um, I don't think I need to read past the title for this one. However, she recently had a miscarriage. And while I felt really sorry for her, I was also kind of glad about it because now she wouldn't be able to upstage us at our wedding. My fiance took me with her to visit her sister in order to console her. And there I said, well, you should see the glass half full now. At least you can wear a smaller bridesmaid dress at our wedding. My fiance glared at me, then her sister said, Is your wedding the only thing you f- care about? I tried to de-escalate the situation, but she just kept unloading on me about how much a sadistic narcissistic I am, and when I've had enough, I told her, Well, I'm sorry that your failed pregnancy won't allow you to upstage us at our wedding anymore, which made her burst into tears. My fiance tried to calm her down, but my future sister-in-law just told us to get out of her house, which we did. All hell broke loose at my home when my fiancé started scolding me about how I could be so insensible to her sister's recent trauma. But I told her that she was the one who started to insult me over an inoffensive remark meant to cheer her up. Oh my god. How? Oh my god. How is... Oh my god. I can't speak. We've had a big argument about it and now I'm sleeping in the guest room. She's still very bitter about it and says that she doesn't know if she'll be able to go through with the wedding if her sister decides to drop out of it because of me. I think she's overreacting about the whole situation, as her sister would probably stir up some trouble at the wedding anyway. But maybe I should have indeed handled the situation with her miscarriage better than how I did. So, am I the asshole? If this was me, my fiancé said this to my sister or had this thought and intention, I would not go through with the wedding. That's my sister, right? When she hurts, I hurt. And this man is acting like a diva because he doesn't want to get upstaged by a pregnant woman at our wedding. Like, bad heart. Get away. Like, oh my God, this cannot be real. My boyfriend confessed that he's bi. What should I do? This claim is not my story time instead of me on Instagram. My boyfriend has always been a little bit femme. A little backstory on how we met. We go to the same college and we ended up in the same class. To be completely honest and frank, I thought he was gay from the moment I met him. And because I thought he was, I allowed myself to become his friend. You see, at this point in my life, every time I try to have a friendship with a guy, he would always just try to hit on me. Therefore, I could not trust a guy to be my friend. But my boyfriend, let's call him Ben. Ben was different. He was gentle and very sensitive. Now look, I didn't ask him, are you gay? But several other people in my class and I thought that he was. 
was. One night, a bunch of us went over to a friend's house. It ended up being kind of a party. People showed up from another college. There was about 20 of us at this get together. Two hours into the night, I look over in a corner and there is Ben making out with a girl. So at this point, it's confirmed that he is not gay. After a couple of months of friendship, I decided to confess that I thought he was gay the whole time. That's when he laughed and said, that's crazy because I've had a crush on you ever since I met you. Because we're friends, I don't want to jeopardize anything between us. Then he kissed me. I was confused and I didn't know how to respond to him. So I just said, thank you. And thank you for letting me know. We both laughed and after that, we just kept our friendship going. That's when I realized I started catching feelings for him. One night I decided to shoot my shot, told him I thought he was cute. And after that, we made it official. We were in a fully committed relationship. Fast forward a year, things got weird. I had a new lab partner. Let's name him Chad. Chad was really, really good looking. But of course, I was in a fully committed relationship. I was totally in love and head over heels for Ben. Also, Chad had a girlfriend and he was just very respectful. Chad and I had to get together to finish a project. I told Ben that I was going to go to Chad's. That's when Ben blew up. He freaked out and told me that I should never go to a random guy's apartment. His behavior was completely bizarre. He was jealous. He had never behaved like that before. He asked me to keep my contact with Chad to a minimum, which is practically impossible since our professor put us together for this project. We were stuck together for the rest of the semester. After that, Ben was always in a bad mood. Anything I would say would set him off. He always had this like stinky girl attitude. Finally confronted him and asked him why he was always in a bad mood and acting like a stinky bitch. That's when he confessed that he might be attracted to boys that he thinks he might be bi this was so crushing to me i felt absolutely gutted so this not only means that girls are my competition but also guys he started to cry when he told me this but i didn't want him to think that i was freaking out so i told him that it was okay and that we could talk about it some other time then he said i have to say something else he confessed that he had a crush on chad but the reason he got angry that i was going to go to chad's is because he's jealous that i'm hanging out with chad and he's not hanging out with chad the whole time i thought he was jealous because i'm his girlfriend but no then he told me he had a crush on three other guys in our year and one that was above us i couldn't help it and i asked him if he was still attracted to me that's when he told me that i was disgusting for trying to make it all about me he even called me a narcissist then he gave me the cold shoulder for three days when i was finally able to get him on the phone he told me that he was just confused then he asked me if i could stay away from chad this is when i went crazy on him i told him that him confessing all of those things to me and not even considering how i might feel is terrible and that he was the narcissistic one he apologized and asked me if we could try to work things out later that day i'm in class sitting next to chad and i'm trembling and crying turns to me and says are you okay then he takes me outside of class to just take a breather and i told him everything that was happening with my boyfriend except for the part that my boyfriend has a crush on him Chad was so nice about it he said that i should just take my time and give him the space to breathe then something else happens chad and i finish one of our projects that's when he says to me that he actually can't be my friend because he's attracted to me and he told me that basically we shouldn't speak anymore because he's got a girlfriend and what he feels for me is wrong i was confused at this point i was barely attracted to my own boyfriend after finding out he's bi does that make me a bad person i don't know I want my boyfriend to be mine. Then I started getting feelings for Chad. He's always been extremely handsome and very considerate and kind. He was the only person that tried to help me out when I was hurting, but he did ask me not to speak to him anymore. I have nobody to talk to. My boyfriend asked me for space, and of course I said yes. Two nights ago, I found out that he hooked up with somebody else. He's a liar. I'm planning on speaking to Chad soon. Give me your advice. What should I say? Am I the asshole for asking my husband to get rid of his dog? I married my husband two years ago. I'm from Mexico. My sister Rosa got rabies from a dog when we were both young and ended up passing from it. I tolerate dogs, but I honestly have a very bad fear of them. Ethan has a black Labrador, Layla. Layla would be a very good dog if she was on a farm herding sheep or something. But Layla lives with me and my husband in our house that isn't small necessarily, but becomes small for a dog like her. She has nipped me, jumped me, attempted to bite me, ran over my niece, etc. I never felt com comfortable around her, but Ethan has had her for five years and is very attached to her, which I understand. I found out I'm pregnant and I'm 25 weeks pregnant currently. I'm having twins and after the ultrasound, the first thing I thought was, Layla, I can barely get past her when I come in through the door and if that's hard for me, I'm worried what it would be like even more difficult to try to raise two babies with a dog like that around. How do I keep myself from starving when I visit my husband's family? My husband and I only visited his family out of stage twice. This time, our flight arrived just after dinner time. I bought a bag of nuts at the airport to hold me off until we ate. His dad picked us up at the airport and drove us straight to a family party. It was catered. Now here's where it gets tricky. I have a couple of medical issues that require me to eliminate certain foods from my diet, such as gluten or dairy. I know it is confusing for others and usually can find something I can eat. This time, it was a chicken wings and celery. We spent the night at his parents' house. The next morning, I was offered a few pieces of melon for breakfast. Nothing else was offered to me in the way of food the rest of the day. We flew back out around 6 p.m 
p.m., my husband raided his parents' refrigerator and ate some of their leftovers that I couldn't eat. He had a second helping later in the day and nibbled on other food that had out for their guests.